Is it here? No. Here? Oh no, where's my heavy metal drawer? Ah, oh, there's my heavy metal drawer. That's for you, Louise. Wow, that's cool. Then I can also join today's episode of Distressable Junk Velocities. Welcome to Distressable Junk Velocities. Transform your found objects into junk journal art. Junkalocities is a coined term combining junk journal and curiosities, created by Nicole at Nature Spirit Journals and myself, Luisa Heinzel. Just dig out all those forgotten curious findings from your drawers, the ones you've kept to use in your junk journal one day. We are celebrating 20 years of distress this year and invite you to celebrate, craft and most importantly, distress along with us. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Thanks for joining me today here with a new episode of Distressable Junkulosities. <laughs> a small warning up front. If you happen to see any hair in this video that is no longer attached to my head, I'm afraid I can't help it. <laughs> it's all in the name of science. More precisely, in the name of Distressable Junkulosities. <laughs> Today's project is totally inspired by a project that Tim Holtz has published in his book Distressables. And if I can, oh, here is it. <laughs> Couldn't find it. So this project here inspired us for today's project. He called this Thinking Outside the Tag. And when Nicole and I read this caption in the book here, we thought that is just perfect because with junk journaling, we often think out of the box and tags are a great thing for junk journals, aren't they? So why don't we think outside the tag today? And then we thought Tim has included some metal pieces here on his tags. And that is really interesting because I think no, I'm sure we have a lot of distressable junkalosities in our stash that we can use for making a really, really cool tag and a tag which thinks outside the box. Yeah, so let's do that today and let's distress some metal pieces and let's think about some techniques for doing that and also some things that we have to consider if we want to do that. So I want to create a tag today and if you want to craft along with me, you can basically take any metal pieces that you might have at home. If you don't have any metal pieces, then wait a little bit because I will show you some alternatives you can do today's project even without having metal at home. Yeah. So, But if you want to use metal, then you can basically use anything that you have. And for me, <laughs> distressing metal is something really weird because in the beginning of my journey of junk journaling I thought okay for example these little labels we can use them for for example putting them on a junk journal cover we can use little clamps for clamping some journaling cards or something like that these little guys bulb pins really helpful for hanging some charms to our pages and so on and in the beginning I thought okay if for example this clamp is gold then it has to stay gold because what shall I do with this? How can I alter this? And uh, I thought hmm, these things are like, you know, you take them and use them and that's all. Why did I think that? Because I had no knowledge about how to distress them. And in the meantime, I found some really cool techniques. And yeah, now distressing metal is some of my f is one of my favorite things to do for junk journaling. So let's do that 
today and perhaps you have some things where you think okay I have that but I don't know how to use that and that's of course also a point um, that we want to cover in our videos today so Nicole will show you something different in her video she will use different metal pieces and she will make a different tag than I will do in my video so perhaps you can find some inspiration for your own projects I want to take this tag here today I will tell you in a second why I have chosen this and what that exactly is because you can hear that is not paper but don't be afraid don't run away if you don't have something like this you can craft along anyway you can take something else and onto this tag I want to glue some metal pieces and then I want to do a really really in my eyes easy and fun technique to alter those pieces to make them really grungy and really yeah nearly crusty somehow I want to create something like a rusty crusty <laughs> texture <laughs> and in the end I want to have something that I can hang to my wall as a decoration piece but I can at the same time use that as a key holder because I thought that is cool when we have some distressed drunk callosities and then we have them on our wall. I really like to have some, you know, decorative elements that have to do with junk journaling in my craft room uh, or in my apartment at all. And that's the plan. But if you don't want to do that, I mean, if you don't want to make such a decorative piece, you can, of course, also take the tag and put that to a junk journal cover that would also be a possibility for using what we want to make today so let me first oh let's let's move this here little magic <laughs> let's first talk about the things i have on my desk here so perhaps you want to know where these things come from this is i mean that i tell you what I have here I do that so that you can consider what you want to use and that you get some ideas what you perhaps have in your stash and perhaps you have forgotten that you have that I mean that can happen as well <laughs> happens to me all the time um, and perhaps if you want to collect some things then you can perhaps get some ideas with the things I have here but there's no necessity that you have all these things in exactly the same way yeah so you can take basically what you want so what do I have here? I have these three bulldog clams here. I got them from Nicole for Christmas last year. <laughs> Thank you again, Nicole. These are really, really cool. They look already really old, but we will grunge them up even more in this video. Then I have this little metal label and these two fasteners. I will only use these for decoration, but you know, they these labels have these holes and that looks really not so cool if there's no... Um, you hear this uh, bread in there because then it looks a little weird but we have that and then I have this little donut <laughs> I got that in a happy mail the other day and as you can see this has a really cool texture so if you're lo looking for some metal pieces from your stash um, Perhaps you want to check if you have some which have already a texture or perhaps you have some like this little ideology star which is yeah relatively smooth on the surface. It, it doesn't have any texture but of course we can add texture to something like this. But what I'm trying to say if you have some pieces which have different surfaces then the whole project of course gets more interesting. Uh, as well. These are some ideology screw heads. Then I have a bulb pin and I need a second one. Where's my second bulb pin? Hmm, okay, so I will pick one up in a second. This little guy is also from ideology and this little guy here as well. <laughs> and I have two book corners here. I think I bought these on Amazon, but I'm not totally sure. Then I have a little bell. <laughs> this ideology key which says found and speaking about found I found these pen nibs on a flea market in Rome really really cool and then we already come to the like more meaningful things these have a really really big meaning for me because you know I love Rome I love to travel to Rome and I love to spend my time in Rome so these are something that 
um, has to do with my emotions about Italy and especially about Rome. Perhaps you have some special things as well that you want to display on your tag. Same with these coins here. I got them in a Happy Mail as well. And these are really, really gorgeous because these come from New Zealand and I'm so so happy that i have these and i want to display them on my tag as well and then i have another special piece this is a spool from the sewing machine i got got from my grandma and as you can see there's still a little of the thread on here i have some of these where you know there was um, thread on the spool left and i left it there so when i sew with these <laughs> This thread from my grandma is always on there. Even, I mean, for a not drunk journal person, do you know what I mean? That sounds weird because uh, I think that sounds a little silly as well because this way there fits not so much of the thread onto the spool, of course. But I have the feeling when I have the thread here that my grandma is sewing with me and that she gives me some tips and tricks when I'm sewing because I can't sew so, so well. And, you know... <laughs> If you, <laughs> hopefully you don't think that I'm crazy, but I want to include this here as well. And uh, this, by the way, shall also become the part of my tag where I then can later on put um, my key. You know, when, when I have a key with a ring, then I can use this as the hanger for the key. Yeah, and I want to use these little pieces here these little letters to build the word home these come from it's really hard to spell the word and talk at the same time holy moly what is happening here so these come from ideology as well and these are plastic meaning if you don't have metal perhaps you have some plastic letters or perhaps you have some wooden letters i have these here as well to show you <clears throat> oh, excuse me that you can do today's technique on wood as well. So meaning if you don't have things like this, but you have perhaps some interesting uh, plastic or wood pieces, you can use those as well. Because I want to imitate something yeah, like a grungy, crusty, rusty texture. And the mediums are used for that. Mm, you can use on plastic and wood as well. I also have some... They are like, how are these called? These are some, some pieces from a game, some game chips, or how is that word in English? I don't know. These are really sturdy, like cardboard. Yeah, You could also take, for example, a book cover and cut that apart to get some tiny pieces like this. I want to use these for making some more dimension on my tag. I want to use them as like, you know, a tag on the tag. <laughs> I will show you in a second. So I have four of these. And for the tag itself, meaning for the base of the tag, I want to use this etc. tag here. This is a product by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. Perhaps you have already seen that somewhere. And this is the number 8. This is a really sturdy material. As you can see, the package says thick board, a thick sturdy surface to be collaged, altered and embellished. And this package doesn't say that it's really, really a good material if uh, when it comes to working with wet mediums, meaning if you want to spritz water to something and you want to get a cool effect, then this material is really good. I mean, you can't take it into your bathroom and go take a bath with this for two hours. Yeah, then it would probably be like uh, wood mache or something like that. But it can handle a lot of wet mediums. And that's why I want to use this today. If you don't have something like this, you could alternatively take a book cover from an old book, for example, or a new book would work as well, but that would make no sense. Um, or perhaps if the book is not so good, then you can also take the, the new book cover and you could cut yourself a tag in the size you like. Then it's also a little thicker because, you know, this um, material from a book cover is really, really thick in the most cases and um, if you want to work with a lot of water as well then you can seal the surface just with some gel medium for example or collage medium to make it a little more um, you know uh, 
waterproof, yeah, so that you can use wet mediums on this as well. Yeah, uh, so let's go into this. Uh, the first thing is I want to take all of my pieces here and I want to glue them down to my tag just as they are. And when I do this now, <laughs> you might think, how the heck can she know where to put these pieces? I can tell you how I know that. I, I know that exactly what I want to do. <laughs> but <laughs> I am not a magician. <laughs> but I have planned that in the beginning. That took a while because um, in a second you will see my arrangement here. Ooh. And then you will see um, that I thought about the position of each piece so that everything fits harmoniously here to the tag. And I have done that by taking my pieces here and I have decided where I want to have them. And then I have put everything to my tag and I took a photo. And that is something that I can recommend. You can do that as well. And then later on you have a really easy job to see where you want to put all of your pieces. In my case, you know, I always make a German and an English video. So I have my finished project from the German video right there on my shelf so that I can see my arrangement. Meaning if you want to make more than one of these, of course you could take um, one piece that you have already made as a reference as well. Yeah, but a photo would be really helpful. And please don't think that I have done that this here uh, within five minutes. Yeah, if you think, oh, that takes an hour, that is normal. <laughs> I think that is normal. So I'm going to take some um, matte gel by Liquitex now. You could alternatively use some collage medium. I would probably do that if I had some collage medium. I, yesterday I realized that my collage medium is empty and that I don't have another jar of that. So, but that would work as well. Mm, we want to try, uh, sorry, not try. We want to use a glue which dries not so fast, which dries transparent. And I want to ap apply this pretty thick so that I have two advantages here. The first advantage is that I have some wiggle room and time to place my... No, I want to do... I, no, 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 no. Ah! <laughs> I'm talking about exactly something like this. I want to have, oh no, the other side of the coin facing me like this. And no, no, no. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Even if you plan how you want to do it, it doesn't work all, all the time. So um, <laughs> the first advantage, advantage is, I'm so sorry, that you have some wiggle room and wiggle time to... Um, you know, um, arrange this here like you want it. This wet glue gives you the possibility to do that. And the second advantage is that we later on already have some of the glue on here, which we can then use for making a cool texture. Because this looks a lot, I know. Uh, I will tell you in a second what I exactly mean by that. So I'm gluing two of these um, pieces here on top of each other to get a little thickness here because now I want to glue one of my... What am I doing here? I need glue on, on here. And I also need a little bit of glue here on the back because I want to take this, put this, ooh, put this here, and then I want to clamp it down, but glue it at the same time. Meaning, I put the clamp here, and with the glue, later on, it, it is there forever. Of course, if you want to do something like this, you could also um, take this and um, attach it without glue. That would also be possible, So, meaning that you can um, take it off. That could be helpful if you want to make a tag which you want to put into your junk journal later. Yeah, so then um, perhaps you want to have some things that you can remove. 
but in this case I want to hang this piece to my wall and there's no reason that I take this off. So I'm just gluing this down. Um, so then what else do we have? We have the key. Which goes here. And for these little guys here, I want to have something similar like here. I also want to have the clamp on the end of this thing, but I want to glue that a little differently to... I think that was not correct. I want to glue that a little different to the tag than here. Meaning, I attach the clamp to this thing, then I put glue on here to be able to glue this here like so, so that, you know, this is like peeking out, thinking outside the tag, you know. <laughs> Perhaps we can take a little clamp. Where's my clamp? And clamp this down for a while so that this can dry really well. And then let's put the little donut here. And then while the glue is still wet, you can see we have a lot of glue here. I'm going to take my paintbrush. <clears throat> I'm going to dab over this whole thing to spread the glue. And I also want to have glue on the surface of all of these pieces, meaning I want to cover this whole thing with a layer of my gel medium. And that has a reason and a really big advantage as well. I also put that here to the clamps which are peeking out, meaning I cover everything that I have here. And that has uh, the advantage that we get a nice texture already because with dabbing this with a paintbrush you already get a really nice texture which adds to the final result of course and on the other hand and that is ooh, even more important he's still alive holy cow <laughs> stay there please <laughs> on the other hand we get the surface of these pieces um, prepared for the next mediums and the next steps of course because um, if you want for example to use acrylic paint for the next steps you can imagine that acrylic paint won't hold so well on the metal. If you would, for example, take some embossing glaze or embossing powder, it would also be helpful to put a layer of, for example, collage medium or gel medium or a similar medium to the surface to give the medium, meaning glaze or paint or whatever, the chance to grab on the surface of the metal and that's why I'm doing this. Um, I'm sure there are videos on my channel where I haven't done that because I didn't know that it is better to do this um, and I have to say I have embossed metal pieces with embossing glaze without adding this layer here and that worked and the embossing glaze is still on my pieces. <laughs> But I also have to say that those are pieces which are hanging on my wall and they are not touched or something. Yeah, they, they don't get touched um, on a daily basis or something. And that is, of course, um, something different if you uh, hang something to your wall or you have it on a junk journal cover, for example, and you use the journal every day. And when I published those videos, I simply didn't know that it is better to do this step here. So if you see other videos on my channel, please excuse that I do that so like weird. 
Lee, I guess. But this is, you know, junk journaling and this is, I would say, something like a mixed media project, isn't it? That is learning every every single day. And, you know, then you do something and you don't know it better. Do you think it worked? <laughs> but then one day you find a better way. And that is, of course, very good because that is how learning works, isn't it? So I make sure that I have everything covered. And when this is still wet, you can see the texture I was talking about a second ago really well. We have to make sure that these guys fit here because I, as you can see, I haven't attached them yet. And this is really empty there on the top. That is a reason because I need to make holes to attach these pen nibs because they are so hard to glue but I will show you in a second how I will do that so I will quickly dry this here with my heat gun so this is dry now I'm going to take my oil now to make some holes here for my breads which are only decoration but you know <laughs> this shall look cool in the end And then I'm going to take the pen nibs and I find the right position. And then I make a little mark here and on the other side so that I then, can you see, make some tiny holes in here as well. And then I want to attach the pen nib just with a little bit of wire because oh, I will show you in a second what the problem with these is they are not flat on the back can you see and uh, no matter how much glue I put here that would never hold and I don't want to use hot glue because that looks not so nice I think and it can happen that it squeezes out and I don't want to see hot glue on my project so I'm going to take a little piece of wire fiddle that through this hole and then put ooh, <laughs> put the pen nib here fiddle the other end of the wire through holy cow through the other hole <laughs> I can't see it anymore just like this and then make sure that this is where you want it so that it is straight I press it here turn it around and then I twist this make sure that it is really tight so that the piece on the other side can't move then we can just cut this off and I will do exactly the same thing for the other pen nib. So here we go. And then I'm just realizing that I totally forgot something here. But that gives me the chance to give you a little tip. If you don't want to use metal, but if you want to use wood. So I have these little guys here made from wood. And if you use wood and if you want to do this technique that I will show you in a second, please make sure that the wood you use is covered with your glue of choice really, really well. When you use wood, uh, imagine you put, for example, acrylic paint to metal or you put acrylic paint to wood without sealing it beforehand. There's a really big difference, right? Because the acrylic paint, if you would put it to a piece of metal without sealing it, the acrylic paint could dry on the metal, of course, but 
the metal would not soak the acrylic paint compared to wood that is totally different because if you wouldn't seal the wood and you would put acrylic paint on here the wood would soak the acrylic paint and for today's technique that would be a catastrophe <laughs> i mean you know the world would rotate tomorrow as well yeah but would be not so good for what I want to do here. Meaning, I have this here. I quickly dry this so that my little wooden pieces stay in place. And then I take another little bit of my gel medium and put another layer on top here so that I can make sure that my wood pieces are covered with this medium really, really well because I want to create a resist so that the medium you can guess it is acrylic paint <laughs> what I want to use in a second can't soak into the wood yeah that is the plan okay so and we have that I will dry this again when this is dry we can decide what we want to do next as I said before I want to use some acrylic paint in a second to use the advantage of the gel medium on here because we have a resist here now and we can create really cool effects with that plus acrylic paint but I want to add some more texture before I do the step with the acrylic paint but that is optional so if you think I'm not this like extreme grungy person I don't like crusty rusty things then just skip the step I do in a second and just go on with the acrylic paint I want to use some grid paste crypt for making some more texture and this crusty look this is my absolute favorite paste by Ranger this is just awesome you can also use this for Halloween projects or anything that shall become crusty, slimy and really extreme <laughs> grungy like, you know, stone things and that stuff. When this is dry, um, that looks really, really cool by itself, even if you don't cover it up with other mediums. It dries a little greenish, slimy and that looks really, really interesting and it looks like, yeah, like stone, really cool. If you don't have this grid paste, but you want to use a grid paste and you perhaps have some others, then you could also, of course, <clears throat> use either the grid paste, oh, sorry, <laughs> the grid paste opaque or the grid paste translucent. That would work for this project as well and for the effect. Or what you also could do, if you like some glitter or some glow, you could use the Snowfall or the Glow Grid Paste as well. Mm, this has glitter. If you cover that up with acrylic paint too much, then you won't see the glitter anymore. But perhaps you want to um, try that out and, you know, in a second you will see how you can even get some gl glitter effect from this because we won't cover up everything totally yeah and with the glow paste it's the same if you use acrylic paint be careful if you still want to have the glow effect in the end that you don't cover the paste up completely because otherwise it gets um you know the acrylic paint is opaque and if you put that on here or on here then you would cover the snowfall and the glow effect of the paste yeah so but in a second that will make sense hopefully so <laughs> let's use this and put that on here you could try this of course with a normal texture paste as well without grit i mean that would work as well but then you won't have this gritty effect and you, you won't have this crust in the end i mean yeah because this is like it's like mm, wet sand somehow and if you apply this here, of course, later on, you can see and feel that <clears throat> I'm sorry, the texture that this gives you. I like to dab this on a little bit just like this. And I try to pay attention that I don't apply this on really like tiny details, because, for example, here on the key, Later, I still want to be able to read the word found. So I put this here just a little bit to the surface where not the writing is. And I pay attention that I don't cover up these little details because otherwise 
you won't be able to see them later. Here, especially with the coins, the texture of the coins is not so extreme. And because of that, I just do it, you know, a little bit here, like so, so that it looks like this crust has like come to the coin, but I don't want to cover that up completely. So I will put this paste onto my tag here and there where I think it looks good. And here where the clamps are, I want to try to get this illusion that this dirt has yeah, like grown around the clamp. Does that make sense? So that it looks like, yeah. Sometimes even with, um, especially with rust, you have this effect, I mean, in reality, that the rust goes where it wants. I, I don't know how I can explain that in English, but I think you know what I mean. And I want to have this effect here as well, so that it really looks like one, but that I can still see the clamp, this tag, this little guy, and of course the shapes. I, I want to keep the shapes of these things, but I want this crust like a, a connector between the single pieces. And if you have some areas where here this little distance is and where you have like, you know, this piece is higher than the tag, it really helps if you take a little bit of the paste to your finger and then you push that against this edge so that it really goes to the very edge here and into this little slot. And then you can press with your finger and dab a little bit. <clears throat> so that it gets thicker here and that you can fade it out to into the other direction. Does that make sense? So when we have that, we can either let that air dry or carefully dry this with our heat gun. And I say carefully because if you overheat such a texture paste, you could get, or not could, you will get some bubbles and if you don't like that look, then please make sure that you don't overheat this. So this is, I would say, 99.9% .9 dry. <laughs> it's not 100% dry, but it's hard so that we can go on with our next step. And for that, I want to take some Distress Paint Scorched Timber. And I want to cover the whole surface of my tag with this color. Yes, you've heard right. <laughs> and because of our resist, we can get a really cool effect in a second. But first, I'm going to try to get this into all of the little slots here so that everything is covered up really really well. I do this really fast because I don't want my acrylic paint to dry. If you don't have distress paint which is really liquid because this kind of acrylic paint doesn't have any fillers that's uh, Hopefully that is the right term. Um, and that's why they are so liquid. But if you have other acrylic paint, which is thicker, then you can mix that with some water and this would work as well. So we are going to cover everything up just like this. And then I like to have something on hand so that I don't have such a big mess on my table like a towel or something like that. Then I take some water and now I want to wash some of this paint off again. And because of the fact that we have the gel medium on these pieces, this looks really really cool because of the resist we created with the gel medium. As you can see, it washes off 
really irregular and that's because we have added the crypt paste here meaning on those areas where the crypt paste is the paint looks differently mm, here for example here in the middle that's a good example i think here's the gel medium and no crypt paste and as you can see this looks really really grungy really dirty and it gets lighter there where the paint went off from the surface but here for example it is really dark and that's because the crypt paste holds the paint if that makes sense and you can control this really well if you have this and you think okay here it's perhaps a little bit too much then just take <clears throat> for example a paper towel and carefully lift that off while this whole thing is still wet also here on the key I want to go over this with my paper towel to have the key standing out a little bit more but at the same time can you see this dirt of course you can't lift it off completely and into these little you know there where these little details are the paint goes in though into those little areas uh, that is not good English I'm so sorry but you know it, it doesn't get completely clean anymore you get a really nice like yeah nearly like dirty outline here can you see this and also in here you get really cool dirty effects by doing this and now you can of course control how much you want to have on the single pieces okay so then I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to dry this if you after drying this think oh this is not extreme enough or I want to change this a little bit of course you could add another layer and do this again I will do that in a second and add another color but that only works with a waterproof medium meaning I have chosen distress paint instead of for example a distress spray because with the distress spray of course you could do something similar but that would not be waterproof meaning if you then would add more layers the first layer would then and you know by adding a second layer the first layer would get reactivated by the water and that is probably not what you want I mean if you want that please you know try that out but that is not what I want here and that's why I have chosen the distress paint meaning an acrylic paint because with that everything I have here is permanent when it's dry so that I can add more layers as much as I want so here for example on these wooden pieces the effect is not so extreme so let's take a little more of the scorched timber and let's paint that on here and do you know why this happened because I mean that happened because the paint in the first step when I painted everything was too wet for the wood I mean <laughs> the different how can I explain that the different surfaces I mean this is a different kind of metal than this this is a different kind of metal than this and this is wood this is not metal yeah meaning the different surfaces react differently and um, they grab the medium differently and here we have a really thick I would say not thick solid um, layer of the gel medium meaning the resist is very big yeah meaning if I have the wet paint here and I spritz water everything goes off but I don't want that I want that my letters here are dirty but still light meaning I dry this a tiny little bit then I take a paper towel and spritz my water to the paper towel instead of spritzing it to the letters and then I can lift off as much as I want to get the amount of dirt I want on here so you can just 
then you know rub that off a little bit and because of the fact that we've dried it a tiny little bit a second ago a little bit of this paint has already dried so that it stays there then and now we have this like dirty look but it's still light and we can read this here really well yeah read c or how how can i say that this is the number 11 as you can see uh, yeah so then when we have that uh, do we want to have another color yes we want that because this is a little bit too oh this is a little bit too matchy matchy of course you could leave this like it is but i want to add a little lighter color i have chosen freight burlap and here i will put just a tiny little bit to directly here to my tag i want to make a diagonal thing not not a line or something but you know i want the freight burlap only here but it shall go where it wants <laughs> do you know what i mean so i want to let it run over here you can also use your finger to bring this around a little bit and now the good thing is that the other layer with the scotch timber is waterproof meaning it will not the fray burlap will not impact the scotch timber and if you think oh here it is a little bit too much i want to have it darker here you can take a paper towel and lift some of that off look you can just press and then it goes away oh, i need a new paper towel just like this so meaning you can control the lighter and the darker areas on your project really well by doing it like this so then I'm going to dry this. I want to add some alcohol ink to some of the areas where we have the grit paste crypt. I think that alcohol ink and grit paste in general is a really, really, really awesome combination. But in my opinion, alcohol ink in combination with the grit paste crypt is just magic. So what am I going to do? Here, for example, on this clamp, I have the grid paste crypt mainly on the right side and on the left, there's only the gel medium, meaning we have two different like areas on this clamp. Who? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is a piece for myself. <laughs> Here's a little bit of liquid from my body now <laughs> on this surface. I'm so sorry. Oh my holy moly. <laughs> so I take this. And I look where my, my crypt paste is and I apply the alcohol ink exactly there. And as you can see, it moves automatically um, and it soaks into the paste. Then I'm taking a little bit of alcohol and a, an alcohol ink brush because I don't like this straight line. And I also want to get another effect. You can see that the alcohol ink here is really dark and it doesn't have the color sepia yet because, you know, that is because the paste is like dark. Everything is dark. How can it be the color? But here where the uh, metal, like the naked metal with the gel medium is, you can bring this around and then suddenly your clip gets a little bit rusty because it takes the color of the alcohol ink. And what you also, of course, could do is if you have painted this and you think, hmm, I want perhaps that it looks like a little like more rusty somehow, then you could also take your paintbrush and a little alcohol and then just dip that on there so that the alcohol ink goes a little bit 
into the background here so that it looks like the rust on the pen nib went into the other areas here. In this case, with this color combination, I really like that because it makes it a little warmer somehow. Let's dry this as well and oh no let's let that dry by itself because we have other things to do that can dry with the air because <laughs> I have this little guy and I have this what about the color of this I think I want to leave this exactly like it is because look that looks absolutely gorgeous really good combination yeah but this little bell, I want to color in the same color of alcohol ink like my other pieces there on the tag. And that is really easy because, you know, on uh, alcohol ink, on metal, you can just throw it on, let it dry and be happy really fast um, perhaps you see that everything here is really matte now of course that is because we have used a matte medium to cover everything up and the acrylic paint is also not glossy or something yeah but in my eyes it would be nice if we could get some of the glossiness of the metal pieces back how to do that? Really easy. First, dry everything really, really well. Now, it is really important that everything is really dry. In the step before, when we used the grid paste script, it was not so important that it is 100% dry because there happens nothing. Yeah? If you go on um, and let that then dry overnight, for example, everything is fine. But in this case, in a second, I want to use some steel wool and some sandpaper. And you can imagine if you have some areas which are not totally dry, then you would destroy everything. You may have to make sure that everything is really completely dry. Okay, so this is completely dry now. And now we can bring some of the, yeah, this glossiness and this shine of the metal back by using some steel wool or a sandpaper. For tiny details I like to use a piece of steel wool even if I really don't like to touch this but you know here for example where the writing is it's really helpful if you have I mean this is fine somehow and not so I mean this sandpaper here, the sanding disc by Ranger, is also a fine sandpaper, but I like to go over these tiny details also here on the coins with the steel wool and then for the more, you know, not so fine areas, I take my sandpaper and with that we can bring a little bit of this shine back. So then let's think about some contrast. Mm, of course, you could use a lighter color now um, and add some more contrast in a lighter way by using, for example, a distress crayon. Um, first, I thought I wanted to use the distre distress crayon picket fence that is white. But then I realized that my crayon is empty and that I don't have a second one. So if I had one, I would probably go over some areas here with white. Can look really cool. But 
um, if you don't have the picket fence crayon, like I don't have it, you can use um, something else and think about alternatives. So I came to the idea to use some golden gilding wax that makes it somehow a little bit more elegant. And on the other hand, if you apply this here, it seems to be lighter, even if it isn't white. But you get contrast with this. So I will go over some of the areas here where I think it looks good. I mainly do that there where the grid paste crypt is because I really like the effect of the gilding wax on this gritty paste. Look, that looks really, really cool. So I will do that. In some spots here and let's also make the breads gold and as you can see the label itself is still a little bit invisible I want to have a really really extreme contrast with my white letters in a second I want to build the word home here, as I said in the beginning. And as you can see, the contrast is really extreme. And the label itself is not popping out so much. So I want to take a little gilding wax here on my paintbrush and just go carefully around this little rectangle here of the label. So I won't put it to the frame, but I mean to the this outer frame, but only here. Yeah, mainly into the edges of this rectangle like this and then I'm going to take some gel medium again and I glue my letters down here in the middle these letters are really white I mean I want contrast with white but at the same time I want to make them a tiny little bit dirty as well. So I will quickly wait until the glue grabs and then we are going to make them a little dirty. And not only that, in the camera it's hard to see, but when I look to this, mm, you know, <laughs> the letters are, they come directly from the package, yeah, and they are plastic and they are you know they are beautiful I really like them as they are but in this case I want to have them like a similar look and surface like the other pieces and they look a little weird at the moment so I'm going to take my dirty paintbrush here here's still some scotch timber on it I'm just going to take this and do it like this so that it is still a little bit dirty when I <laughs> am finished with this weird process here <laughs> and then I take this while my gel medium is still wet and then I just oh that is way too much I've just put my paintbrush into some water so that I don't have too much of the brown on here because I still want them like nearly white with a tiny little bit of dirt on them. And now I use the gel medium, which is too much in between of the letters to cover the letters themselves. And with this little bit of dirt on my paintbrush, I can get a little dirt to the letters and also to this star here. This outer frame of the label is still a little bit invisible. I really like the gold here, but now it looks like the label was like this rectangle and we have the two golden breads here, which are like hanging in the air a little bit now. That is because this outer frame and the background has not enough contrast. And I think I want to put a little shading around the label with the help of a Stabilo oil pen. For doing that, I'm taking some water, just a little bit, 
and I dip the pen into the water and I want to oh that is not enough go around here and I will first bring the pigment of the pen here to this edge and I take a dry brush to be able to just move this a little bit and fade this but I don't want this black to run too much I want a really smooth shadow here <sighs> I would say this looks really cool <laughs> but if we want to hang this to our wall for example or if we want to put that to a junk journal cover let's think about that so if you want to put this to a junk journal cover of course you would have the cover below the tag yeah if you want to hang that to your wall of course you could do this exactly like it is now but can we perhaps make this even better i think so I found, ooh, I'm so sorry, this is too close. I found this book here in my stash and I really love this book because look, the spine is really, really gorgeous. And if we imagine, so I will uh, not take this side, even if this is the front, but I want to have this facing my wall and this, uh, you know, be the front because then I can put this on here without having the trouble that I have to cover this up here because this label you uh, look this is blue and that doesn't fit to the colors of the rest and I don't like that this number peeks out here so I take it this way and then <clears throat> I can what is this this is blue as well oh no okay we have to live with that do we have to live with this what is that hey, go away I don't know what that is but now it's gone <laughs> So um, perhaps you can imagine that um, uh, how this looks when it's on the wall because, you know, only the tag on the wall would perhaps be a little bit lost. And, uh, you know, I want to hang my key here. I want to have this really, really interesting. And the other thing is <clears throat> when I attach that to something like a book with gives, uh, which gives me a distance to the wall then and imagine, please, this is here and I hang my key to this little spool here then the key itself doesn't touch the wall so that the key can't make any marks or damages or something like that on the wall if i would take this and put that directly to the wall then the key would probably touch the wall and that uh, drives me crazy or would drive me crazy the problem here is that this is a little you know wiggly woggly because of these clamps here and because of the fact that the surface here on the back is not totally flat we solve this problem by taking some of these little guys here these are also from the etc line by tim holtz and stampers anonymous these are these little tiles and these give me the perfect distance so that these clamps are not in the way anymore so i wanted to take these and just take some hot glue and glue these down here. You could do this with collage medium as well. But in this case, I think this is really handy because hot glue dries really fast. So let's press this down so that it gets really nice on here. Yeah. And the problem with a book is uh, when I hang this to my wall, no matter how I attach this, I mean, I want to have some little things here, you know, these little guys where you can then um, put two nails into the wall or perhaps even one in the middle would be enough. I mean, this is not heavy, but no matter how I attach that, uh, the problem is when the book hangs on the wall like this, it could happen that with the time, the book moves like this and gets wonky because when we have weight on here it could happen that the book makes something like this and the other thing is and that for, is for me even more um, nerve-wracking when I have the tag on here 
And when then later on my key is hanging here and I take the key off and perhaps um, I don't look carefully enough or something like that and the key gets stuck here a little bit, then the book will open. Yeah, so when this is on the wall, it could happen that the book opens and I, of course I don't want that. I don't want this to fall off from the wall. So what are we going to do? We are going to take this here again, the gel medium, then we are going to take a spatula. Could do, you could do that with a paintbrush as well, but with a spatula it's really easy. Let me just check if... Wait, are the pages here so like crazy? But they are not, the pages are not coming out. So if you want to um, do this, then Please make sure that there are no pages which are, you know, want to, which want to fall out completely. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm trying to massage this in a little bit. And as you can see, I use a lot. And with a spatula, you can then press that in to these little slots in between of the book pages. You don't have to... Um, you know, glue each page to each other because we are going to bring a relatively thick layer on here and massage that in and then later on the book will stay closed automatically. And when I have that I take my finger tool and I massage this in even more because with your finger of course you can control that better if you don't like glue on your finger please take a paintbrush when we have that we can just take this and let that dry you could clamp this with some clamps if you want to do that i can recommend to take a clamp which is not too heavy um, i have these these are made for hanging kitchen towels and they are not so um, they um, don't press so much like for example such a clamp I can't recommend to do it with this kind of clamp because when you press down here for example then you get and here and here let's say then you have in the end a book with a hill in the middle because it is pressing too much and then it dries like that and then you get problems to attach your tag and that is exactly what I want to do here now, but I want to add some more white here because I think this is really nice with the white there, but <clears throat> let's take some bouquet flowers and let's put um, some of those here and there. Where's my... Here. These flowers are from the ideology line by Tim Holtz. I really like them. You can, I mean, if you know my channel, you know that I like them. <laughs> you can color them with different mediums, but I also really like them in white. And because of that, I want to include some of these here. But uh, where is my, where the heck is my pencil now? <laughs> <laughs> here we go I want to first determine the position of the tag so that I in a second can be really fast with my hot glue so I'm going to take a pencil I hold it in an angle here so that I don't see the pencil line later it disappears then behind the tag and now Let's do this. So I will stand up from my chair so that I can have a better control over this. Okay, so I think that should be enough. Make sure if you work with hot glue that your hot glue is really, really hot before you start gluing because if it's not hot enough you don't have so much wiggle room 
and then you also can't press it down so well. What do we think about this? I think I really like this. But the bouquet flowers are a little more white than this, of course. We made this dirty, so uh, it can't be the same white. <laughs> well, <laughs> holy moly, I, today I lose my things. Where is my... <sighs> Here, uh, I have this brush with the rest of... <laughs> Uh, Scotch Timber Oxide Ink and I just go over these just the tiniest little bit I don't ink my brush up but I use the rest on here so that these flowers get only a tiny tiny little bit dirty just like this mm. and then in the, for my last step I want to take the Distress Crayon Black Suit because I want to bring out the frame of the book a tiny little bit and I want to get a nice connection to the black areas we have here on the tag itself I think that looks nice so then very important thing um, if you want to have a pizza yeah then <laughs> I mean imagine you are on the couch in the evening and you think oh I want a pizza I mean that needs a little bit of preparation yeah perhaps some weeks or so but <laughs> it cracks me up <laughs> to please do a little training with your uh, husband or your wife depending on what you have and then train him or her to listen to the little pizza bell and then <laughs> you can just <laughs> go ring the bell go back to the couch and 10 minutes later you will have your pizza if the training was successful <laughs> so <laughs> this this little thing here <laughs> shall go to this clip I'm hoping that you are inspired to try something out, perhaps something like this or something totally different with distressing some metal pieces. Even if you don't have metal, remember, you can also use plastic or wood. See you the next time and have a very great and creative day. Bye bye. Sometimes I ask myself, what the heck am I doing here? Is this normal or is it crazy or is it just a normal day in the life of Luisa Heinzel and nature spirit dwells? But I mean, 20 years of distress, yeah? I mean, you have to, you know, put some effort into these things. <laughs> Would be good if I had a styling here, uh, a TikTok channel with styling tips. This could be the new hair trend of 2024. Distress your hair. And then a few million people would think, oh, we have seen this trend. We have to try this out. And then... I would finally have a viral video and if your hair doesn't have the same color like your metal pieces that would also be really helpful Luisa but I was born with Straßenköter blonde meaning street dog blonde <laughs> ich kann das nicht machen Weil das ist ja geil. <lacht> oh wow, that's cool. Then I can also... 
<lacht> Nein. <lacht> Aber ich müsste eigentlich, hier müsste eigentlich noch so ein Ding dran hängen. Kann ich hier nicht noch so ein Ding dran hängen? If I poke into my head now, then is it then an work accident or is that head don't move. <lacht> ich kann nicht. <lacht> ich kann einfach nicht. How cool is that? Then I can also join today's episode of Distressable Drunkalocities. So, jetzt muss ich hier noch so schleudern. 